Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to take a look at how we can use identifiable with views. In this example we're going to look at how we can use it with a for each which is a pretty common view when working with lists. So before I actually get started I actually have a video called breaking down identifiable in Swift UI that you should check out which goes into detail about what it is and why it's important so you should definitely check that out. But the first thing we want to do is design our model that we'll be working with for our source of truth. So now let's create a new struct called person and we'll give it two properties, first and last name. So we have our struct person here and all our person is simply going to hold is a first and last name. So we just have two properties here to hold those values. And one thing that I've done is mark them as constants because I don't want you to be able to update and change either of these values. So we need to create some kind of data source that our view will read from. So let's create an extension on our person called data so we can just fake um, some dummy data. So let's do that now. So because we're not actually working with an API in this um, you know, video, we're just going to just simulate and just have some dummy data that we can just present on the screen. So as you can see here, I've created a static computer property called data, which just returns a collection of people that I've assigned. So the next thing we've got to do is actually create a source of truth for our view. And this is going to be a state variable that actually holds an array of people. So in our content view, let's just add this now. So now this is our source of truth for this view. And it's a state variable. And let's just mark it off private. And then when we originally initialize it, right now it's empty. So what we want to do is we actually want to simulate when the screen comes into the foreground. So when the screen appears, we want to set this people array with our data. So what we're actually going to do next now is actually create a V stack. And within that V stack, we're going to add our text as well as add our on appear to set our source of truth. So what we're saying is that when our V stack appears on the screen, we're going to set our source of truth with our dummy data. So now when our VStack comes onto the screen, we want to show a list of our people. But how can we actually achieve this dynamically? Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to have to specify the first person, second person, third person, or imagine if there was 100 people in this array, you wouldn't want to manually, you know, say that I want you to display the 100th person because that just isn't maintainable and it just wouldn't work in a live application. So this is where for each comes into play. And for each is a Swift UI view that allows us to loop over a collection to create some views. So with for each, you give it a collection and it returns a collection of views based on some kind of model or range. So what we're going to do is create a collection of text views that display the user, user's first and last name. So let's actually type this out together. So within your VStack, just delete the text that's here and then if you just type out for each and then if you just open it up you'll see now that you have quite a few initializers so if you wanted to you can actually create a for each where it's um, looping through some data which is just a collection that we have here or you could give it a range or you could give it a binding and we'll get into the ID bit later but you normally have this closure here content, which is where you place the view that you want your for each to create. Now the option that we want to use is the option where we specify the data, the ID and the content. So this third one here. So within our data, we're just going to use our people source of truth because that's what we want to create our views from like so. And then for our ID, because we're working with for each loops, you need to give it a unique way to uniquely identify each item in your collection, like I discussed in my identifiable um, video. So in order to do this, you need to use something called key paths. And what a key path is, is it's just a syntax that allows you to access a property within a object. So in order to do this, you just want to do the backslash, I'm pretty sure that's backslash, and then say dot, and then in our case, we want to uniquely identify each person based on their first name. So we're just gonna say first name like so. And then within our content, we're able to get each item that's being leaped, looped through our for each. So if I just hit enter here, 
and then what we need to type here is item because this is the item that is looping through that you're currently on and then within here we're just going to add in some text and then we're just going to say item dot first name and then item dot last name like so cool so now in your swift ui preview you should notice that you have a list of all the people that you have within your data structure so like i said before you can actually pass in any view that you want to create within this closure so it's worth knowing that you're not just limited to using a text here we actually could create our own custom view so let's actually see how we can do this now so we'll create a view called person view and this will literally just accept the person and that you want to display their first and last name for so we actually don't need this view to have a binding because we're not actually changing anything relating to this person we just want to display their information so we just need to create a view which, which is a constant so let's actually do this now so let's create a new swift ui file and we'll call this person view and then within this person view what we want to pass in is a person so i'm going to say let item person and then we should get an error in our swift ui preview so in order to fix this let's just inject our first person from our dummy data like so and then now what we're going to do is just copy our text that we have here and then place that within here like so so in our swift ui preview when it loads you should see the first person in your dummy data being displayed in your swift ui preview for this person view and if we go back to our content view all we need to do now is just remove our text and instead just use person view like so so now you can see that we get the exact same effect except this time rather than us using a text we've got our own reusable person view component so looking at this this may work but there's actually a problem here and I actually could break this list if I wanted to. So what actually happens if I give one of these other people the same first name? So let's give this person here the name Billy. So now if you actually run your Swift UI preview, you'll notice here that we've actually got a bug. So we're not actually showing Billy May and Billy Bob. Instead, we're showing Billy Bob twice. So why is this happening? Well, we've actually told the for each view to uniquely identify each person based on their first name, but it doesn't know who to use when there's more than one Billy, so it defaults to the first one. So how can we uniquely identify each person? And this is where the identifiable protocol comes in to help us solve our problem. So this protocol allows us to use a unique identifier to identify objects uniquely within a collection. So let's actually add this protocol to our model now. So on our struct person, let's just add in identifiable, like so. And then now, what you should notice is that you actually get a error saying that you need to conform to this protocol. So let's actually do this now. So if you just hit on the red circle and then hit fix, you'll now notice that you get a new property injected for you called ID and its type is object identifier. Now we don't want to use this um, type so what we're going to do is actually change this by making it a constant first of all and then we're going to give an instance of a UUID. So let's update this to a constant and then we'll change the type to UUID. So we're not actually using a variable here, we're using a constant because we don't want the ID to be regenerated if this model gets recreated for whatever reason. And we're using UUID since we want this identifier to be as unique as possible and it's almost impossible to get duplicates based on their combinations when working with UUIDs. So we need to now update our for each to use our identifiable objects ID rather than our first name as its unique identifier. So in our ID here for our for each, let's actually change this from first name to ID. And then now if we hit resume, you should notice that our issue has now been fixed. So we don't have Billy Bob appearing twice. We have the two different Billies with their correct last names. And that's because we're saying in our for each, I want you to use the ID property to uniquely identify each person. And when we create an instance of each person, they all get their own unique UID, preventing us from getting duplicates. 
But if we wanted to, we could actually reduce our for each code even more. So since our object is identifiable, it will automatically use the identifier property from our protocol. So we don't actually need to specify the ID and we can remove this. So what we can do is actually take this bit out. And because our model is marked as identifiable, our for each loop will automatically know that we should use this property to uniquely identify each person that it loops through, which is why you can see here that we have the same effect. Okay, cool. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.